Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new to Resolve, you've probably been trying to export and getting weird file extensions that just don't look right. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you're supposed to be exporting inside of DaVinci Resolve, and then I'm gonna get into a bunch of frequently asked questions because this is actually an update video to a video that I made about three years ago, and I get a lot of the same questions, so I'm just gonna answer those in this video after I show you how to do it. And without any further ado, make sure you've subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any of these DaVinci Resolve Resolve tutorials coming from me, and let's jump into the video. Here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. I'm on the edit page, you can also edit on the cut page, but once we have our finished clip here, normally in a lot of other editors we would come up to file, we would go to export project right here, and then we would have a project exported into a finished file. But in DaVinci Resolve, what that does is save it as a project file. So that if you need to bring your thing somewhere else and work on it somewhere else, or if you need to collaborate on something with somebody else and you want them to have your exact same project file, that is how you would do that. But if we want to actually get our finished product out of DaVinci Resolve into a usable video, we're gonna go ahead and come down into our main little menu down here. We're gonna click on the Deliver page, which looks like a little rocket ship, if that isn't there for you. You can go ahead and go up to Workspace and then come down to Reset UI Layout, click on that, and it should bring it back up for you. If not, Shift-8 is the hotkey to get to this page. Once you're here, you're gonna go ahead and give yourself a file name. We'll call this one Test. And then we need to set our location. So we're gonna press browse, and then we're gonna to navigate to where we wanna put that, and we will go ahead and save this right to the desktop in this case, so then we'll click save. And then for your format, I would generally go ahead and instead of QuickTime, go with MP4, because in most cases, that's gonna be a more usable file type. If you know that you need something else though, obviously choose the format that works for you. And then Kodak, you don't really need to worry about that. You'll know when you need it. Encoder, same thing. And then resolution, you don't necessarily want to choose a higher resolution than the resolution that you shot your project in because all it does is take the pixels that you have and stretch them out, so you'll lose quality. And if you want it to look a little bit sharper, you can even down res it a little bit depending on where you're putting that finished video. And then quality, we're just gonna leave that automatic. And if you need a smaller file size for any reason, you can go ahead and restrict your quality to say something like 10,000 kilobytes per second, and that will give you a much smaller file size, but with still pretty good quality. But I generally just leave that automatic best. The advanced settings and the subtitle settings, you don't need to worry about. What we're gonna do once we have all of these things up here is go ahead and click on Add to Render Queue. And once you've clicked on that, it should pop up right over here. We see Untitled Project, which is the name of this project, timeline number one. That is what we want, and it shows our little file path down there, and then we'll click Render All. And then once this is done going through, and this says Completed In and gives you a time, your file will be wherever you told it to go with your location setting on the left side over here. So the issues that people were having with the last video, a lot of them actually come from bugs or just weird settings. So the main one is people would export and then they wouldn't have any audio with their finished video file. And that's not very cool. It's generally not what you want. So what you need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen to you is over here on the left side, go ahead and click on this audio tab, and then make sure this little box that says export audio is checked, because sometimes, for whatever reason, it's not. Make sure that's checked so that you get your audio with your final copy. And then another issue that happens sometimes is this add to render queue button will just be completely grayed out. If that happens to you, the thing that I've found helps the most people is to just come back to your edit page, select your whole timeline so you can click in your timeline and hit control a or you can drag over everything whatever you need to do to select your entire timeline and then right click it come up to new compound clip and turn that whole thing into a compound clip and then once you've done that generally this will be lit back up another thing that can cause this is if you only have generators in your project you won't be able to export it with DaVinci Resolve, which can be frustrating, but just throw a clip in. Then if you select one of your clips and then press the default hotkey is D for this, or you can right click it, come up to enable clip, and then click that. Just disable that extra clip that you had to add in. 
and you'll be fine. And if none of that that I just said makes sense to you, it's because this isn't happening to you and you're lucky enough to not have to deal with that one. And then the last thing that I get a lot of questions about on the old video is why is my video looking so skippy inside of this player after I hit render all? That's because your computer is going absolutely as fast as it can to get through all of this footage. So if it can handle it, it's just gonna zip right to the end. Like this four second clip right here, completed in two seconds. But if we had a ton of effects on this and a bunch of other things, it would go really slow and it could probably take like 10 minutes to do this four second clip if I really layered it up with a bunch of stuff. So if you still have questions or you're still struggling with this, please let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely be helping you out. If this video is helpful for you, again, please make sure you subscribe to the channel because it does actually make a difference. And I post every single Thursday at 9 a.m. So if you're looking to learn DaVinci Resolve, this channel will definitely help you do that. That's it for today's video. I will see you on Thursday.